Hi all, this is game 13 of the classic Fischer vs. Spassky match in 1972. Fischer was playing black and Spassky played e4. Now Fischer innovated again in the opening by playing knight f6, which is the Alekhine's defence, named after the chess world champion Alexander Alekhine. It's a very provocative defence, tempting white to just attack black by just playing e5 to attack that knight, and the knight ends up going to the queen side usually, to the b6 square. You see first though, Fischer's trying to undermine now that e5 pawn. So Spassky attacks that knight again and it ends up going to b6. And in this position, this is a fairly standard position, but it is interesting that, that Fischer's chosen this, this opening and not his Sicilian. So he's trying to avoid the Russian opening theory perhaps. Now with this a5, he tempts Spassky to play quite a committal pawn move, which maybe Spassky later regretted. He played a4, and you see that this a4 pawn becomes a tactical target later, and probably ends up losing the whole game for white, because once these pawns start going forward in the end game, this past a pawn becomes stronger and stronger. So this all stems from this a4 move, believe it or not, as we're going to see. Fischer played d takes e5 to undermine that pawn a little bit and now knight a6 and you see straight away that this knight is coming here to put pressure on that poor pawn. So this is quite a materialistic plan by Fischer and again the queen would just moves one square simply to attack that pawn. So Fischer's whole um, strategy now after the opening has centred around winning this a pawn which he now does, and black's slightly better. So the pawn gets pushed forward, and white has compensation though, strong pressure. So Fischer is being quite provocative here. He doesn't mind his king being weakened a little bit, chasing that bishop back to h4, and now plays bishop f5. Now g4, so Spassky is charging forward on the king side of his pawns, and it's as though he's being provoked by Fischer. Fischer's saying, come and get me. So bishop e6 now, and now knight d4. So this pawn can't be taken unless black wants crippled pawns here. This would be looking very unpre unpleasant if this did occur. Knight takes e6, and also this, this would be a weakness as well. These, these are just awful. Is that worth analysing? Probably not. It's just there's a dynamic compensation. The pawn structure is awful. So Fischer played bishop c4, just keeping his pawn structure intact. And now queen d7. You, you see now that Fischer's holding on to his pawn and, and trying to increase his central control. Now bishop d5. So it's, the bishop's coming back to the centre, and Fischer's retreating now, his queen back to c8. So Spassky's got a more aggressive position, his rook's in the centre, his knight's in very aggressive squares. But, can they stay in such aggressive squares? Fischer starts challenging them now with this knight d7, and now c5. So he starts occupying some of the centre. And now after queen c6, we see a forceful and horrid simplification to the ending. After knight d6, Fischer plays queen takes d6, exploiting this pin. So he's managing to get the queens off, which should in theory increase the value of this past pawn now. This A pawn is getting more dangerous as we approach the end, the end game. It's a 73 4 move game, so um, that's why I'm going through a bit quickly these moves now. But you see black's pawns um, are advancing. And Fischer offers the exchange sacrifice, because if he can pick up that pawn, his position will be really easy to play after losing that exchange, because these, these two pass pawns are worth their weight in gold after that. So Spassky is already in trouble now, really. And there was an interesting episode here. After a2, black's pawns are very, very dangerous, but this d pawn is quite dangerous. But also this rook has to be stopped in some variations from coming here. So Fischer was wanting to, to maintain this rook on h8 as a defensive rook. But, after bishop d5, king g3, Fischer is tempted to play rook a3 check, and now he leaves 
the protection of that h4 square by playing rook h a8. And my analytical assistant doesn't really like this variation at all. Instead, it, it believes Fisher had a much easier win here. Let's have a quick look. a1 queen takes takes. So F Fisher would be um, just only marginally material up here. But this seems to be a very simple win here in this position with the, the, the past pawns here. And although it's the opposite colour bishops, this, this could be an easy win. Um, black's pawns in the centre are also very dangerous. This is, this is um, going to be targeted as well. So perhaps this was a better continuation. So Fisher can let Spassi come in on the h4 square. And he ended up losing this bishop on d5. Um, the bishop can't be taken here because of a1 queen. But it can in this variation where it's taken by the other rook. So Fisher's just lost his bishop, but he's still better because of all these past pawns. And maybe, you know, Spassky could have potentially held this ending, according to my analytical assistant. So Spassky's a piece up, bishop up, and it requires very precise play. But According to my analytical assistant, Fisher blew the position somewhat at a certain point, and we'll see where. It was this move. Instead of h1 queen, maybe f4 is more accurate. And this pawn is, is going to add to the pressure of, uh, exerted on black. Um, let's have a quick look at this variation. How is white defending against this space invaders type pawns coming down the board? See here it's getting quite critical. If here, king b2, let's, let's see if, um, is there any way for black to make progress here? Or is this a position my analytical assistant has got completely wrong? King b5, nope. This is a dead end, but, but computers won't see it as a dead end. White's got a very nice blockade to stop Black's king infiltrating. These pawns are held. They're all, they're all held. So even though Black is inferior material up here, um, White, White's drawing this. So the way Fisher played it was um, he, he did h1 queen with the idea of coming in with his king. But here, rook c3 check might have been a better way of trying to hold the position. E.g. this variation, where black has this amazing idea of playing king takes b3 here. So this is a side variation. But anyway, that didn't happen. In the game, F Fischer um, exerted more and more pressure and Spassky seemed to crack up. So his f-pawn became a winning pawn now. The pressure of Black's pawns just became critical here, and Spassky had to resign. Let's have a quick overview and summary of this game. So it was an unexpected opening choice by Fisher, the Alakine defence, and a sort of materialistic targeting of the A pawn straight after the opening. So Fisher grabbed this A pawn and just held on to it. He didn't mind Spassky getting dominant centre and um, pieces pressurising the centre, because here he started fighting back with this knight d7, and this knight d6 allowed the simplification, uh, the queens came off, and now we see this very interesting exchange sacrifice offered, but also defending this h4 square, but then things became a bit wild with Spassky doing this double pawn, sorry, this pawn sacrifice to get this d7 idea going. And the rook does come in via the h4 square. And Spassky ends up even winning this bishop. So it's a very dramatic game. And in the ending we see this kind of space invaders effect of pawns coming down the board. But Spassky sort of cracking under the pressure of um, Fisher pursuing the win by, by using his king as a kind of shepherd for these pawns. And the pressure of this final position is, is just too much. Let's have a look. For example, rook f4. Just rook takes d4, 
Rook takes d4. Now king e2 would be winning. E.g. Rook f4, f1 queen. And now black king can just come in to queen those pawns. White can't ever take on b3. So that final position is quite interesting. Um, maybe Spassky could have put a, a stiffer fight up by playing this rook c3 check. So that maybe was a missed opportunity. So it was a very interesting game and um, a very unexpected choice of opening um, by Fisher, the Alakine defence. So it was another very, very interesting game from this 1972 match. And I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for listening.